Today we're going to be covering Nightwing Rebirth. You see, following everything that happened to Nightwing in the New 52 in which he became a top secret agent, they then had to kind of reinvent Nightwing, bring him back into the normal fold of DC Comics, and with that they decided to create the Nightwing Rebirth line, which we covered here a long time ago, and I felt it was time to bring you guys the full story of Nightwing Rebirth. This is the Comic Story and Channel, where I take comic books, we turn them into audio dramas, and we read them back to you. The point of this is so that you know what's happening in the world of comic books and can make your own decisions as to what to add to your collection. Today we're going to be covering Nightwing Rebirth issues 1 through 34. I'll explain why we didn't cover anything after this up until the recent stuff at the end of the video, but this is a full story all in itself involving Raptor, so I hope you guys enjoy the storyline of Nightwing vs. Raptor. And now he's in an arcade with Damien, who is super excited to see him. Dick and Damien have been hanging out in the arcade while they catch up. Damien has been traveling the world making amends for his Year of Blood, which we also have videos on, while Dick was undercover with Spiral, which we also have videos on. Damien asks Dick about Helena Bertinelli. She was his partner and then the head of the spy organization, and once they discovered the master plan, she worked with him to end it. Damien asks, you think she'll be keeping in touch? But Dick isn't sure. After Dr. Daedalus messed with her mind, she seems to have other priorities. Flashback to three days ago, when Dick was packing his things and saying goodbye to the students at the school that was used as a cover for the spy organization Spiral. He went to Helena's room to knock on the door and say goodbye. And she told him that she was feeling under the weather and would not be in the mood for a goodbye. Because she was actually putting on her Huntress outfit to get ready for her next mission. To get revenge for the Bertinellis. And if you want to follow her, go check out Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. We already did a video on that. Back in the current times, Dick and Damien walk down downtown Gotham while Damien asks Dick about the files that Spiral had on all the secret identities of every superhero in the world. But Dick reassures him, telling him that all of those files have been collected by Batman and they've been destroyed. To make the situation even better, Dick trusts the current head of Spiral to keep his word that he won't explore the avenue again. It's his old partner, Tiger, former Agent One. Flashback to two days ago, as Dick Tiger, the synthetic assassin from the Syndicate and various other rookie agents were dropping a Hive experimental research facility. The rookies failed to stop the enemies and Tiger called them all almost as useless as Grayson himself. Aw, oh, thanks Tiger, Grayson says, kicking a guy in the face that was about to stab Tiger. Tiger allowed Grayson to come along even though he's not an active agent any longer and Grayson asked him about the device. Tiger assured him that it is being handled. So Grayson jumped on a drone and began to steer it away. Thanks Tony, I have a flight to catch. I told you not to call me that. And with that, he left his former partner in charge. Back in the current time at Wayne Manor, the two boys walk in and Damien asks Dick about the guy in all black. Dick tells him that his name was Midnighter and he prefers to be called Dick Grayson's arch nemesis. And he's pretty sure he's gonna see him around. Flashback to the day before in the Alps, when Grayson and Midnighter were fighting a weird monster, and they defeated him. Midnighter looks up the name of the project. Project Kilicorn? You aren't even trying anymore. The two of them walk through the door technology, teleporting them to the God Garden, a floating base up in space where Midnighter functions out of. And Grayson throws up from the door technology while Midnighter throws the Kilicorn to the ground. He then turns to Grayson. Here's the device the gardener says will help the kid. Grayson takes it, and then Midnighter simply tells him, It was fun being your nemester. Now go back to being a superhero. You're too nice for the spy work, Grayson. Back in the present day, Grayson and Damien sit down and Grayson sticks the device up Damien's nose where it removes a bomb placed there by the Court of the Owls back in the days of Robin Wars. Damien rubs his nose. I demand action figures and ice cream. Batman walks over asking, did it work? Which pisses off Damien since his father knew. So where are the Court of the Owls now? Well, Lincoln and March is standing in a labyrinth beneath Greece. He goes on to state that they have Nightwing on their side now and new plans are in place. Everything will work beautifully from the shadows. And then, takes a dart to the eye. Another man walks forward telling him, this isn't a party for you. Back in the Batcave, Batman asks Dick Grayson if he's sure that he wants to do this. And Dick tells him, I do. They thought they could threaten my family and get what they wanted, but they were wrong because Nightwing is back to infiltrate the Court of the Owls and follow up on that storyline from Robin Wars. Our story begins in Romania with Dr. Leviticus and her undead friend digging through graves looking for her strange coins. As she finds them, she hears a voice stating, the parliament will pay well for those, and then the undead man is shot in the head. Dr. Leviticus turns back to see a gauntlet next to her head, and the voice tells her, what I want is to dig up the past, and if I don't get what I want, it will be you who is buried. Meanwhile, over in Greece, Dick Grayson, aka Nightwing, is summoned to the international branch of the Court of the Owls to discuss his, uh, less than satisfying results. 
The Court of the Owls thinks that they own Dick Grayson because they have threats against Damian Wayne, the current Robin, but what they don't know is that Dick is really playing them. Recently, the Owls of Dubai found themselves the target of a thief and outlaw named Raptor. However, his skills were deemed useful, and they were able to give him a financial counteroffer to have him work for the Owls instead. After his mission is complete in Moscow, Dick will meet with Raptor and accept his assistance and partnership and learn from him. Dick tells the man that they can make him join their little cult, stop Cobra from expanding into their territory, but just know that he won't be one of the talents. He's going to do things his way. Before leaving for Moscow, Dick meets up with Barbara Gordon, and to his surprise, it was not a date because she's in costume, to tell her that he's going to be going away for a bit of an undercover job. She tells him that she thought he was done doing all of that undercover stuff. He went through hell to get back his secret identity. It's going to be dangerous. And Dick tells her, everything they do is dangerous. They're currently on a 275 foot high bridge. Soon, Barbara hears on the scanner that there's a crime happening and tells Dick that he had better at least get her a souvenir from this trip. Later, as Dick gets into Moscow, he finds his target and he acquires the documents that he had. But as he sits alone looking at the nesting doll with Barbara's name on it, he hears a voice telling him that he's pretty cocky for dropping his guard. Raptor states that he's followed him ever since his run and over in the square since he figured the danger was over. The name's Raptor, your new partner. Dick gets up stating, nice to meet you. I told the parliament that I would be doing this alone, nothing personal, but I've already had some of the best partners. Dick begins to leap up the wall, but before he can go, Raptor kicks him in the back, slamming him into the wall. From the ground, Dick tries kicking, but Raptor grabs his legs and throws him off the side. Dick gets up trying to hit him, but Raptor just taunts him and holds out his gauntlet, shooting gas. With Dick stunned, Raptor cracks him across the face, telling him that he needs to sit down, Shut up and listen, because everything Batman taught you, it's wrong. As Dick gathers his strength, he begins to leave, stating, I hope you had your fun, because I'm out. And Raptor stops him, stating, Wait, isn't that what superheroes do? Fight and then team up? Dick stops to listen, and Raptor explains the Parliament gave him an assignment involving the Cobra unit. They hijacked a ship over in the Black Sea belonging to a prominent member of the Parliament. Raptor whistles for his aircraft, telling Dick, You're a stranger here, so you're gonna need me. Someone to spot you. Dick figures, why not? Because he's got so much to teach him, and what he learned from Batman is wrong, what could go wrong? The next morning, Barbara calls up Dick, stating that she's going to be in Tokyo for a bit, but when he's free, she has a place for them to meet up so he can give her her present. But in the meantime, don't do anything dangerous. He tells her, me? Do something dangerous? It's like you hardly know me, Barbara. Shortly after, Dick and Raptor jump down into the Black Sea, and Dick notices a shark swimming a little close to them. Raptor says not to worry. These are common threshers, and they're not known to attack. But as the two of them swim off, Raptor is suddenly pulled underwater. Dick rushes underneath, and he sees Raptor struggling with a snake man. But before he can help, Raptor Raptor's gauntlet begins to click, and then a red liquid sprays out covering the creature. The sharks from before swim over, attacking the snake man creature. And Dick asks Raptor, I thought you said they didn't attack. And Raptor tells him, they don't, but they do attack snake dudes who have just been sprayed to the shark attractant. Why would you even have that tool? The two of them quietly sneak into a ship, and Dick decides that he'll do some investigating on his own, and he heads into the lower levels. As he enters into a medical room, Dick notices two people laying on the tables there, and then he hears music coming from underneath one of them. After pushing the table, he finds a trap, and behind him, one of the bodies begins to get up. And then another person starts to crawl out of the first one's stomach. The one from the stomach grabs a scalpel and swings at Dick, but before she can hit, Raptor jumps in, taking the blow. After realizing what's going on, Dick throws one of his batons, hitting the woman, and Raptor says, Did you want to know what the Parliament had that Cobra wanted? Dick tells him yes, but then Raptor notices the scalpel still inside of him, and he says, If this is how you watch a guy's back, it's a wonder Batman's still alive. Raptor then explains that Cobra's genetic research division is all always looking for raw biological material. They prefer the forgotten people, the ones that no one will notice missing, refugees. The parliament is creating a new nation, a stronghold for the elite, and these people will build those walls. Back in Greece, the parliament commends Dick and Raptor for their success in taking back the boat, and they hand them their next mission. As they're leaving though, Raptor asks a question that is kind of on Dick's mind. You want the parliament destroyed, right? Well, you need someone who's already got one foot in the dark, a guy who just delivered innocent people to the claws of the parliament. Dick punches them, telling him, shut up, just tell me you have something. Something that could bring the parliament into light. Raptor whistles for his aircraft and Dick asks, why should I trust you? And he tells him, because I've always been playing the long game. The two of them then head to Norway for their next target, Nut Rudd, the world's most acclaimed designer of mazes. The story with Nut is that he got his fortune told by a tarot reader. The reader scared him by telling him that one day an assassin would come and kill him, so he turned his home into a giant trap-filled maze. But before they head inside, Raptor notices something and swings to protect Dick. His arm, though, is caught, and then he is slammed to the ground by Barbara Gordon. Raptor fires a dart at her, but Dick tells him, stop, whoa, 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 
let's skip the fight and then the team up thing. Can we just have a minute? Dick pulls Barbara aside asking what she's doing and she tells him, what the hell are you doing? She tracked his phone signal here because he stood her up and she was worried. Dick explains that this is the undercover job that he was doing and things got kind of a little crazy, but he's close. And that's the important thing right now. He then leans in to whisper that that house down below them, there's a blueprint of the parliament's secret headquarters. They want it destroyed, but he's going to take it and finally put the parliament in jail. Raptor calls out that he doesn't want to be that guy, but they should probably get going if they're going to report back in the morning. Barbara starts heading down to the house with them, stating, well, I'm going to join you. If you can't make a date, then at least we're going to do superhero stuff. The three of them sneak into the mansion and they begin going through nuts and traps within his giant maze until they reach the last room. On the floor is another puzzle, but this one is with tarot cards. Once all three of them are inside, the door shut and the ceiling begins to descend. Thinking back to Nut's vision, Dick arranges the cards just as the reading would have told him, with him dying in his home. And just as the ceiling is about to crush them, it stops. Raptor tells him it worked, and then the lights go out and Barbara screams. Once the light comes back on, Dick sees Barbara on the ground and Raptor nowhere in sight. The two of them chase Raptor down the hallway, and as they enter the room, both of them stop and look in horror. As they see Raptor standing over Nut's body, Barbara says to Dick, you just let an innocent man die. Dick runs over punching Raptor, and then on the screen, the Parliament watches, stating that they did a good job. Now the Bat family will know Nightwing's moral failing. The payment will be, but then Dick grabs Raptor and slams his head into the monitor. But before he can hit him again, he says, that's enough. From behind them, Nut gets up stating, did I do a good job? I tried real hard not to breathe. Dick asks, what's going on? And Raptor explains that he just used some of his fake blood that he keeps stored in his gauntlet. The problem with not feeling pain is that it's easy to bleed out. Raptor helps him up stating, here's the deal. The parliament thinks he's dead and we saved your life, so thank us. And why don't you hand over that blueprint in return? As the three of them leave, Barbara yells at Dick about how they're supposed to inspire fear into criminals, not help them play sick pranks and steal money. Dick tries to defend himself, but Barbara goes on stating that he pretended to be dead to infiltrate Spiral. Then he sold his soul to destroy the parliament of owls, swinging so far out it's like he doesn't want to come back. As she leaves, Dick asks Raptor why he didn't tell them sooner that he wanted to dismantle the parliament. And Raptor tells him, because earning trust is shown by actions, not words. I told you, everything Batman taught you is wrong. Dick asks, now what? And he tells him, we should stop by my home before we go back to Greece. A long time ago, the Court of the Owls needed a way to keep track of whoever they gave their coffer to. To do so, they hired a mad inventor to make the Book of Wisdom, unreadable to all but a select few. But in my home, I have Dr. Leviticus, the one who created the book. Once Dick and Raptor sit down, Dr. Leviticus explains that the Book of Wisdom is something that she did in fact create, but she's done other things like cure death, aging, even lactose intolerance. A long time ago, she found a way to bring the dead back using an alloy, an electrum, and the owls wanted to use that for its immortality. The book would mechanically store information from the patterns on the coins, but now the owls want her dead, well, more than dead, so she built a copy of the book as well. The only thing that they're all going to need are the coins. Later, Dick and Raptor are welcomed back to the Parliament Grove, the owl's labyrinth by the orator. He tells them that they did such a wonderful job, and he tells them that it's finally coming time to celebrate the birth of the Owl's new nation. A new nation needs their symbols, their gods, and these refugees will be the blood sacrifices. The festivities will begin in the morning, so until then, they're welcome to eat and drink. Once they're left alone, Dick says that he's done playing the long game. He's going to finish this tonight, and Raptor tells him, your instincts are right, we do it tonight. Later that night, the orator is woken up by a knock on the door, and when he opens it, he's told that Dick Grayson and Raptor freed the rats from their cages. He then asks them if they told anyone else and they say no and then with a slash the two are far dead as the orator says that it could hurt his standing with the parliament especially since he was recently promoted to god down in the labyrinth dick and raptor led the captives out when suddenly the orator comes in crashing through the wall he shouts that there will be sacrifices made of the innocent and dick says that that right there that's what you've been betting on the entire time Dick throws his baton at the wall, bouncing it off, hitting the orator in the eye. But he knocks him away, and he slashes at his stomach. Suddenly, a dart then hits the orator, and he begins to fall over. Raptor helps Dick back up, and he asks, what was that? And Raptor tells him, the orator's body has been conditioned to assimilate animal DNA. So I injected it with some animal DNA that I had lying around. That shark attractant. Raptor shouts for him to go before anyone notices, but when they turn the corner, Dick sees it. There, in the center of the labyrinth, is the box of coins. Dick grabs the box, and Raptor tells him that he hopes he remembers how to get out, because I'm having a real hard time right now thinking straight Dick looks back and he sees a cut on Raptor's leg when the orator first attacked and Raptor's bleeding out. He begins to take off his gauntlet to give himself blood, but while Dick ties off the wound, the orator shouts that he's going to make Dick one of them. The two quickly get up and they begin running, but as they run to the exit, Raptor stops and says, I can't go on. I'm a wanted man. If I go out and escape with you, they'll just put me back in a cage. So go, take the coins and leave. And then Raptor places his hand on Dick's chest and he pushes him out the door. As he falls, Dick calls out, I'm ready for pickup, Tony! 
and the voice tells him, you should not be calling me that. A glider flies out and Dick catches it, and he safely floats down to awaiting spiral agents. However, what Dick doesn't know is that Raptor is still alive. Lady Eve of Cobra thanks him, telling him the coins work. The first names of the Parliament of Owls are coming through. And Raptor tells her the device that Dr. Leviticus made that Dick gave Spiral has a little back door. So every time they draw a name, so will she. Lady Eve then asks, what about Nightwing? And Raptor tells her, don't worry your pretty little head. I've got him wrapped around my finger. Our story begins in Sydney Tower in Sydney, Australia, as Dick heads out to meet with Tiger for a bust on the Parliament of the Owls. But as the two of them get ready to move in, they hear a scream, and then a giant cobra creature charges out of the doors. Dick fights it off, and Tiger looks at it, stating, I've never seen this before. It's a cobra convert, genetically enhanced assassin. Just then, Dick looks into the room where the owls were and sees them all dead. Seconds later, Tiger gets a call from headquarters, stating that they found something. It seems that the Book of Wisdom has a backdoor transmitter on it. Whenever they recovered a name from the coins, it seemed it got sent somewhere else as well. But before Tiger can question Dick about it, he sees Dick already jumped off the balcony. Later, over at Raptor's hideout, Raptor sees Dick and he offers him a beer. Dick tells him that he knows that he rigged the book. He knows that he used him! As Dick grabs him, Raptor pulls away, stating, Hey, I didn't murder anyone. I sold the names to Cobra and they donated the money to help refugees. Ones that the Parliament enslaved and exploited. Dick knocks Raptor through a wall, stating, It's not for you to decide! That's for the justice system! Raptor just laughs. Ha 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 ha! fighting back, stating, You're just going through Batman's version of justice. All that will happen is the rich bastards will get high-powered lawyers to help them get a slap on the wrist. He goes on stating, This is my kind of justice, the kind your mother would have wanted. The two continue punching back and forth, knocking each other through the walls until Raptor tells him, You see, I got all kinds of hobbies, and you're one of them. Dick looks up and he sees news articles from back when he was in the circus. Everything that's happened to him since his parents died, and everything up to becoming Nightwing. Dick turns back and grabs Raptor by the collar, punching him repeatedly, telling him to take this mask off so he can see the real him then. Raptor manages to push him away, stating, I was gonna show you when you were ready, but now is not the time. And he pricks his neck. As Dick falls to his knees, Raptor goes on stating, all those things you got from Batman, Bruce Wayne, they all make you weaker. Dick reaches out, but then the drug takes over and he closes his eyes. All he can hear is Raptor stating, you just need everything taken away from you. Over in Gotham, Bruce Wayne gets ready to give a speech regarding their recent attack, but before he can get into it, a voice calls out to him from the crowd. The man asks, what do you have to say about the fact that the damage done to the city by the monsters is nothing compared to what you and the one percenters have done? Raptor then pulls his hood down and takes out the security guards, telling Bruce, what do you say about taking in orphans and stripping away their culture to make little extensions of yourself? He then pushes forward, grabbing Bruce by the neck, whispering, I know you're Batman, so how about we get along with this. Bruce clenches his fist, and then he releases it, allowing himself to be captured. Back at Raptor's hideout, Dick begins to wake up as Damien screams into the radio. He says that his father's been kidnapped, so if they hurry, but Dick tells him, I need to do this alone. This is more than me and Bruce. This is about Raptor and my mom. A little while later, Bruce sits up in his chair, strapped down, as Raptor tells him how he completely disarmed him, down to his laser-cutting tool in his watch. Raptor goes on telling Bruce, You took Dick Grayson from his home, his people, and you raised him in a world of privilege. You turned him into a weapon for the rich against the poor and desperate. You ruined Dick Grayson, so it's time for Batman to face real justice. He continues stating, Even now, the people at Wayne Enterprises went to work making a cover-up story stating how Bruce Wayne shown willing submission to prove his selflessness to everyone. With that, Wayne Tech's stock price rose. And with this lift, once it reaches $200, you'll be dropped. But just before he presses the button, a crack can be heard. And Raptor catches one of Dick's batons. He tells him, It's time for your final. But then a second one flies in, hitting Raptor right in the head, cracking his mask. And he says, fine, it's only fair seeing the eyes that have watched you all of these years. Dick runs in, uppercutting Raptor, and then he runs over to check on Bruce. But Raptor tells him, no, this is what they want. And he hits the switch. Bruce's chair suddenly launches into the air out of Dick's reach. And then he knocks Dick away, going on about how this is what they want. They want to break the poor down so that they'll come running and worship the rich, offering everything to them. The two continue going at it, and Raptor starts to overpower Dick. But as they fight, Raptor continues to talk about how even with his disease, the government wouldn't help the poor with drugs. Even after everyone left, there was one who came by and picked him up. It was Dick's mother, Mary, and the two of them stole the medicine that was supposed to be given to them, as well as whatever else they felt that they wanted from the mayor's home. So from then on, he always watched from the shadows to protect her, till she was killed by a selfish man who didn't get money that wasn't his. Dick then smiles, stating, I was mad at you for all the doubt and pain you caused, but it's really you who's in more pain than me, isn't it? You loved my mother, and when she died, you blamed yourself until you could finally blame someone else. 
Dick grabs a pipe, cracking Raptor across the face, stating, The thing with Bruce, though, is that he raised me to not be like him. We saved each other so that I wouldn't cross into the shadows like you have. Raptor picks himself up, telling Dick to shut up. You don't even know me. You're right. I don't even know your real name. Raptor starts to swing, and Dick tells him, You don't have to do this. I know you don't feel pain, but... Dick then breaks his arms and legs, leaving him there so that he can go save Bruce. Back at the lift, Bruce tries to pick the lock as the stock price continues to rise. Though he picks it to get up, he has nowhere to go. He begins to let go as the chair begins to fall, and Dick swings in, grabbing him before he hits the ground. A little while later, Tiger shows up stating that Raptor has a pretty clever device, so they're gonna confiscate it. But since Raptor's wanted in 17 countries, Tiger can forgive Dick for his hasty exit back in Sydney. Tiger then turns to Bruce, stating, just in case Raptor says some nonsense about him being Batman, they have the technology that can make him change his mind. Dick and Bruce watch as Tiger takes off, and he tells Bruce that this is all his fault. He almost got him killed. He almost fell. But Bruce puts his hand on Dick's shoulder, telling him, You didn't. I jumped. I jumped because I knew that you would catch me. It was a late night in Bloodhaven as Paul sits in his office on a call regarding the most recent weapon shipment to a client. There's a buzz at the back door and Paul tells his client to hang on a second. His takeout just arrived. As he opens the door, he doesn't see anyone and then he's suddenly pulled out. The man on the phone begins asking if everything's okay, but all he can do is hear Paul screaming. The next morning, Dick heads over to Bloodhaven Community Center to apply as a counselor. As he sits in the office, Sean Sang says that his resume looks really good, but her only question is, why did he come here from Gotham? It's rare for people from Gotham to make their way here, let alone apply for volunteer positions. Dick thinks about it, and he wants to tell her that he's here so that he can work on trusting people again. With the things that he's done and the people that he's met, people have died and he's begun to question his own judgment. But rather than stating that, he says that it's because of that new tourist campaign. It really got his blood up. Get it? <laughs> he laughs stating that he's sorry for the bad jokes, but Sean tells him that it's okay. She tends to get a little suspicious with everyone. Real bad habit. She then extends her arm, welcoming him to the long hours, zero pay, and non-existent benefits. As the two go on, there's a knock at the door as James Nice introduces himself and says that he's sorry that he needs to borrow Sean for a quick meeting. James tells Dick that if he's looking for something to do tonight, there's plenty of after dark entertainment in blood. As Dick leaves, he says that he appreciates it, but he's not really much for the nightlife. He heads off and James turns back to Sean, telling her that he really just wanted to talk to her about tonight. He thinks it's time to wear the costumes. Sean says that she's not really sure they're ready for it, but James tells her that they've already lost Grace. It could be something to help face their monsters together. For her. Later, Dick begins setting up his new apartment and he enjoys the life of not having to put a costume on in the evening. As 8.30 turns to 8.40, Dick realizes that this could actually get pretty boring. While laying in bed, he hears the sounds of sirens and decides that maybe just this once he'll go out. Surely he can figure himself out on a single night anyway. After suiting up, Dick listens to the police scanner to hear that there have been reports of a murder of Paul Petreno, who was brutally beaten and had his bones broken in 39 places. The report goes on to state that the strength used to beat him was inhuman. Dick lands on a nearby building and he hears something from the shadows. Gorilla Grim jumps out ready to attack. Dick tells himself that he knows who this is. Him and Batman kicked this gorilla's butt on more than one occasion. But it's strange that he would show up here in Bloodhaven. Dick easily dodges the attacks and he pins Grimm down as the police arrive. And Grimm shouts, He didn't do it! He's trying to stay clean! That's why he came to this city! As the officers pick up Gorilla Grimm, one tells Dick, Thanks for the assist, but they are only going to be nice this once. They don't deal with the tight types around here in Bloodhaven. But before the officers can take him away, Grimm pulls away telling Dick that he's gotta do something. Go talk to Sean Sang! She'll know what to do! And as he says that, the officer tases him and takes him away. A little while later, over the community center, Sean tells herself that they're going to be here soon. She can do this. And the door to her office suddenly opens up as Dick walks in stating, hey, we need to talk. And she turns around shouting, Nightwing? And that's when Dick sees that Sean is another one of his old villains, the Defacer. She shouts for him to get out of there because she would rather not hear anything that he has to say. He could ruin everything that the runoffs have worked so hard for. And as Dick begins to question who, Stallion charges through the door, knocking Dick to the ground. He grabs onto Stallion's hand and he throws him into a mirror. And Sean runs over telling Stallion to calm down. Don't do anything stupid. Remember all that we've done in group. Remember the man on the inside. Stallion looks at one of the broken shards in the mirror and he says that he's done it again. Why can't he get this through his thick skull? Sean tries to comfort him and then tells Dick 
Look at what you've done. These people came here to get away from Batman and all of the others. Another voice tells everyone to calm down, and James walks in with the other runoffs, explaining, Nightwing, this is a support group for former supervillains of Gotham. Sean starts pulling Dick away, telling everyone it's all right. Nightwing was stopping by just by mistake. Mouse then speaks up, stating that maybe since he's here, he can help them with the conspiracy. Dick asks, what did she mean? And Sean pushes Dick out, telling him, you've already caused enough trouble here. As Dick is leaving, he thinks about how these people are terrified at just the sight of him. But then again, that's how everyone treats you when you're with the Bat family. Once outside, James runs out asking Dick to wait. He just wanted to tell him something before he can go. All of the people here are because of Nightwing, and they do need help. The police don't listen to them, but they would listen to Nightwing. They already lost Grace to the Whale Enders gang. Dick tells him no. He just recently got wrapped up with a criminal and... But James stops him, telling him that he too was on the wrong path, but the runoff saved him. So maybe they can save Nightwing as well. Dick says fine, he'll help, but after that he's gonna walk. And then he asks if there's anything that they notice different about Grimm. James says that Grimm was trying, but he did have relapses. The other night, he was at Meadowdale Mall, where nothing good ever happens. Dick decides to head over there to find that it is actually an illegal street market, though the cops do nothing so long as the residents stay away from the boardwalk in the city. After a bit of asking around, Dick finds a woman who Grimm used to hire. He pays her and asks how did that work, and she tells him to get his mind out of the gutter. He just liked to act out little scenarios, like King Kong kind of things. Said it helped him remain secure to his gorilla hood. She tells Dick that she can show him where Grimm lives for a little extra. The woman's directions lead to the old whaler's dock where Grimm lived in one of the shipping containers. As Dick looks around, he notices a shipping building that has security cameras on it, which could possibly place him here at the time of the murder. He sneaks in to check out the security footage, but he sees that the tapes at the time of the murder are currently signed out. The records show that it wasn't the police who took it. The person who did smeared their name with some sort of liquid that smells like horses. As the sun rises, Dick decides that it's best to just call it a night. And the next night, Sean tells the rest of the runoffs to have a good night as they leave their meeting. Through the shadows, Dick steps out, stating that he wanted to wait until they were gone, and Sean says that's nice of him. But maybe they are not just the only ones who's been traumatized. Dick tells her that he knows. Back then, he was wearing a different set of shorts when he first met her and arrested her. But right now, he's here because he needs to talk to someone. He goes on stating that he's having a lot of trouble trusting people, and it feels like he may be a lot like the runoffs. Really, what he's trying to state is that he feels Grimm is innocent, and he's going to help him whether they like it or not, because helping the runoffs could help him too. Sean tells him back when she was taken away by the police, she was so mad at him that she couldn't see it. But the look in his eyes was something like, what if they had met under different circumstances? Dick says, like, what if it were just us? And she leans in telling him, yeah. But the sirens begin to blare as two police cars pull up and they tell Sean that they would like her to come with them as she's currently a suspect in a murder. Dick tries to stop them, but Sean tells him that he'll figure this out. One of the officers then pushes Dick back, telling him that he can go back to Gotham. This is the job for the real police. No ad campaigns, as he points to a billboard that has night wing on it. A little while later, Detective Elise arrives at the most recent crime scene of Robert Chapman with Defacer's tag sprayed all over the place. But before she can even drink her coffee, Dick appears behind her stating that they need to talk, and he's a little sorry for scaring her. She tells him it's alright, that coffee was crap anyway, but he is contaminating a crime scene. He looks around and asks, why would it matter? They've already taken their photos and decided that it was Sean Sung. Elise says, well, given the circumstances here, this is her work. But as Dick finishes up and gets ready to leave, he tells her that that might be an easy way to look at it. But if she looks harder, she'll find that something isn't right. After leaving the crime scene, he heads over to James Nice's house to let him know what happened to Sean. And he asks, how did Nightwing know where he lived? And Dick tells him, I am a detective, you know. After explaining the situation, Dick then says that someone is setting up the runoffs. So they need to have a meeting tomorrow night. James tells him that that won't be a problem, and then it asks Dick if he remembers when he said that he came from a dark place. Six years ago, James was driving with his girlfriend, and he was using a lot of drugs, and he ended up crashing their car. Though he walked away, Jamie didn't, and his case was thrown out over a technicality even though he was guilty of killing her. He then says that he knows that he volunteers to help the runoffs, but what if... They weren't innocent. Dick tells him that when Sean was taken, he saw the look in her face and it wasn't guilt, it was faith. The next night, everyone decides to gather up and Dick tells everyone thanks for coming to meet me. But Stallion stops him telling him, we're here for Sean and Grimm, not you. Dick decides to tell everyone that's fine, but right now, they're gonna need to tell him everything about this conspiracy. As everyone speaks up, they all explain how a few weeks ago, Grimm was approached by Paul for a job, which Grimm took. When Grimm went to the meeting, it involved a crew of Bloodhaven businessmen. Paul for the import-export trade, Robert Chapman as the mob lawyer, and Carter Forsyth who handled real estate. While Paul was handling the arms trafficking, Carter laundered the money through his business, and soon they made contact with Robert's contacts, the second hand. But there was also a fourth silent partner who was upset about 
about missing the shipment. Dick tells everyone that with this information, he needs to go find Carter because he has to know something. But before leaving, Stallion says that he'll go with them to make sure that he doesn't get stomped on. And Mouse speaks up stating, Nightwing, you're like us for leaving Gotham. So right now, you're one of the runoffs. Over at Carter's construction site, Carter begins packing up his paperwork, telling his assistants that they need to hurry. Then there's a sudden thump at the door and Stallion punches it down, telling everyone, Howdy! Carter shouts, asking if he knows who he is, and Dick with the rest of the runoff steps in, stating that he's the guy who's going to be telling them who killed Paul and Robert. Dick grabs him and Carter says that it wasn't him. That's why he's trying to get the hell out of here. If he didn't notice, he's shaking here. Then there's another thump and the trailer begins to shake, knocking everyone down. A voice tells Dick that he shouldn't have come here, and as Orca picks him up, she tells him, Here be the sea monsters! Dick remembers that this is actually Grace Balin, a marine biologist who sliced her own DNA with that of a killer whale to repair a spinal cord injury. But as Dick dodges a forklift thrown at him, he's hit in the back of the head with a pipe by one of Whale Ender's gang members. Grace gets ready to attack, but Stallion jumps on her, telling Dick that he better be quick because he can't hold her for long. While Grace tries to get Stallion off, Dick fights off the gang members as Juan rides up on his bike. Grace manages to throw Stanley off, and Mouse jumps in to try and stop her, but as Grace catches her and tosses her to the other side, Dick runs in to protect her, and Grace starts beating down on him. Through her punches, Giz's squirrel runs up Grace's back with a pair of headphones, and then there's a booming screeching sound. Grace falls to her knees, and Juan asks, what was that? And Giz says that he just played the sound of an air gun at 300 decibels. As the fight ends, Juan mentions that his bike is missing, along with Carter. Elsewhere in an alley, Carter runs off, but someone on Juan's bike, wearing Juan's mask, runs him over. Dick and the runoffs quickly manage to find Carter, but it's already too late. As everyone turns around, Carter suddenly begins coughing and Dick shouts, he's alive! Juan says that he has some first aid on him and Carter tells him that that isn't going to do much. He then says that he didn't get a look at who it was, but there's one more of them. They need to hurry and stop the murderer before they get their silent partner, Mayor Madrigal. And then Carter slumps over as he draws his last breath. Dick tells everyone that they did a good job with Grace back there. Now they just need to go to, but Mouse stops them, stating no one is going to help them. People are just going to see them as villains, and the runoffs leave. Over at Bloodhaven PD, Elise sits with Sean, telling her that even though she feels the police force don't need help, something Nightwing told her is strange. The positions of all of the recent victims' heads were all turned to the left, and after some digging in the past five years, the solved murders all had their victims' heads turned to the left as well. And right now, it seems like they may actually have a killer running the streets. Over at the mayor's office, Madrigal looks out his office building when he notices the cops arriving there. He tells the person on the phone that he's gonna have to call them back when there's a sudden flash of light. The officers on the ground see the flash and they ask what it could be and another one says that he's not sure but someone called in with an anonymous tip that the mayor was in danger. They then watch as Dick crashes into the office and they ask if they think that it could be him. Once Dick gets up he looks over at the mayor to see someone holding him wearing a robin mask. The man holding the mayor then turns away blasting at Dick. Dick dodges the attack and he runs up hitting the man's arm holding the device that he just used. As he beats him down, he says that he knows where all of the missing weapons went. The gauntlets made him as strong as a gorilla. The teletube allowed him to move from scene to scene, and right now, he's trying to frame him, Nightwing. As the two struggle, the man extends a mechanical arm, grabbing the mayor and pushing him out the window. Dick runs over to the window, but then he sees Sean fly by, grabbing a hold of him. The man runs over, grabbing Dick by the back of the head, telling him that he just let an evil man get away. The guilty must be punished. As the man throws Dick aside, Dick manages to grab the mask, ripping it off. And as the city advertisers run into the office, everyone looks over to see James Nice. The officers all begin charging into the room, telling everyone to get down, but James grabs the female advertiser and teletubes out of there. The officers shout for Dick not to move, but he runs and jumps out the window as the officers open fire on him. After ducking away into an alley, a hand reaches out grabbing him, and Sean tells him to get over here. She tells him that she dropped the mare off, and it looks like someone's been setting them all up. Dick says that he knows who it is. It's James. But how did she get here? And then Dick hears a click of a gun and Elise says that she owed him. But he also owes her some coffee. So how about they go for a ride? A short while later, Elise is driving Sean, telling an officer that she needs to go ahead and drop their suspect off at their arraignment. As she drives off, Sean asks Elise if they can just let Dick back in, and she says no. They can't have him be seen. He needs to stay under the car for now. During the ride, Elise asks Sean, how does she know where to go? And Sean says that James handled their budgets for the community center. There was money moved around, but there was a property purchased listed as a quiet reflection project. The strange thing was, why would anyone buy property to relax in an industrial wasteland like Rail Peninsula? Meanwhile, in that building at the Rail Peninsula, the woman Cherry asks, where are they? James tells her that she's the head of the tourism department. She should know, but just know that they are far away from that superhero that she's putting up on the billboards. Cherry says that she told him about the corruption of the mayor and the others. She helped him. And James tells her that she did help him, but she too is guilty. He changes masks and Cherry grabs an energy drink, stating that she had this flavor called Winter Cherry, which is funny because of her name. And then she splashes it onto James's face. He fires a few blasts, but Cherry gets up and runs. 
months. Not long after that, Dick and Sean make their way into the facility and they find Cherry trying to escape. Sean says that it looks like she's about to fall over, but Dick catches her and Cherry says that she'll be fine. She just needs a little pick-me-up energy drink. She takes it out and says, forgive the smell. Someone says that it smells like, and Dick finishes her sentence stating, horses. He then says that she's the one from the ledger. And Cherry says that she's sorry. Once everything started, she didn't know how to stop him. She then goes on stating that all of the recent advertising with Nightwing on the billboards was for him to try and save Bloodhaven from her and James. James jumps out of the teletube telling her that it's too late. Nothing can save her now. Dick jumps in the way to block James's attack, but James punches and knocks him away. Sean runs up grabbing James, telling him that she never really did like him anyway. But as James struggles, he picks her up and he slams her against the wall. He raises his blaster to strike Sean, but then a grappling hook catches it and pulls it back. Dick shouts for Sean to get Cherry out of there, and James runs in, tackling Dick into the teletube. As the two of them pop out, James says that this is where it all happened. This is where his girlfriend died. He then cracks Dick in the head with a blaster, stating that all he had to do was pay the officer who arrived, so no one would punish him. And because of that, he had to punish all of them. James then holds a mirror down to Dick's face, telling him, everyone has to look at the monster in the mirror. So what is it that Nightwing's guilty of? Dick says that he's guilty of trusting people like him. And then he looks in the mirror and he sees a human, one who makes mistakes, one who tries to do better. Dick tries to pick himself back up, stating that maybe he should look into his own reflection. And Elise's voice shouts for James to freeze. But as James turns back, he charges up to fire another blast. Elise fires her gun and the bullet hits the blaster, causing the blaster to backfire, blowing shards of glass into into James's face. James screams out of pain and he trips over the ledge of the bridge. But before falling, Dick runs over there and catches him. A little while later, the news crew shows up and Elise tells the news that the officers here single-handedly took down the villains. She just wants to tell the people of Bloodhaven that they are safe from crime without the help of superheroes. The next day after the group session, Dick goes to see Sean to help her with moving her things. She says that even though she was released, it seems like public service didn't like the idea that she was a murder suspect. Dick tells her that he'll do anything he can to get her back in as soon as possible. And they both look up at the billboard of Nightwing being taken down and Sean says that she's gonna miss seeing that guy around. Dick thinks how he wants to say that he is Nightwing and that he's not leaving because he wants her to know who he really is. But as he walks off, he just says, yeah, Nightwing's all right. Sean grabs Dick by the arm, telling him don't be stupid and kisses him. She then says that when she got arrested, he saw her for who she was back then as Robin. And she can do the same for him. So with things settled, Dick figures that he'll stick around as Nightwing and Bloodhaven, even if it is more in the shadows. And as the night sets and he swings off on his patrol, a man watches, stating that it looks like he decided to stay. Too bad there's only room in this city for one of them. Late at night, Dick and Sean kiss hanging off of a flagpole. And Dick thinks that the only bad thing about hanging a hundred feet above ground or so, actually there's nothing wrong about kissing Sean. After setting her back down in her apartment, Dick tells Sean that he just received a call about a robbery in progress. He's gotta go spank some bad guys. He swings off and Sean tells him, wait, she's been bad too. So Dick just laughs, telling her that he'll save some for her then. As he hurries off, she sighs, stating that maybe then they can talk. Earlier that morning in San Francisco at Titan's Tower, the Titans lounge around and Beast Boy tells Damien that he seems a bit distracted. As Damien grabs a handful of peanuts, he says, Don't be ridiculous. I'm just seeing what people are saying about me on Chipper. He flips through the feeds and he sees people praising him for taking over the Teen Titans. But then the conversation switches to Nightwing as being the better Robin and how he should have been the one to take up Batman's mantle. And then the tags, hashtag the original Robin and hashtag best Robin start trending. And Damien begins to shout, what is this? He jumps up asking the rest of the Teen Titans if Batman was to ever retire, who would they assume is going to take the mantle? And they all think about it and say, probably Nightwing. Damien then throws his phone on the ground, shattering it, and he tells everyone that he'll be back. He has an appointment in Bloodhaven. Back in Bloodhaven, Dick responds to the robbery call, finding the four men wearing horse masks, posed as the four horsemen, robbing an armored truck. It doesn't take Dick long to take the group down, but as one of them manages to get back up, he's suddenly kicked by a green boot. Damien says, Batman of Bloodhaven, huh? And Dick shouts, it's so good to see! What brings you to town? Damien scoffs, it's certainly not the caliber of criminals. He then goes on saying that he's hurt of what he's doing here with his old enemies. So if he's planning on becoming Batman, he's getting off to a poor start. Dick tells him to give him just a second. He, he missed a call and afterwards they can talk. As Dick listens, it's a message from Sean stating that she didn't want to ruin the mood or anything, but she's late. Like, really late. Dick's eyes widen as the message plays and at the end, Sean tells Dick to come over when he gets a chance and bring a pregnancy test. Dick hangs up the phone and Damien goes on asking if he really thinks that he can take the mantle from him and steal his legacy. And Dick doesn't answer and he says, uh, 
gotta go. Damien grabs his shoulder, so Dick flips him to the ground, telling him that he doesn't have time for a Robin meltdown. You're a self-absorbed 13-year-old with raging hormones, and I really need to go now. Dick then hooks onto a building and he jumps off, telling Damien to just wait for the cops. I'll meet you at my apartment in an hour. A few moments later, Dick sneaks back into Sean's apartment, telling her, Hey, the only guy who comes through your living room window is here. And as he walks through the apartment, she doesn't answer. So he calls out saying, Okay, not answering me is really starting to freak me out now. And then he sees Sean's phone on the ground. When he tries to pick it up, he looks into her studio and sees one of her paintings with the word Daddy spray painted across it. A short while later, Damien crawls through the same window that Dick entered in and he says that he didn't know the address so he just followed. And, but before Damien can get very far, he sees Dick crying on the ground. And through his tears, he quietly says, she's gone. Damien walks up telling him that he's scouted the place like he normally does when he enters and there was no signs of a break-in. And judging by the painting, she's the artistic type. So typically flighty and always chasing drama. Dick hands over the Merry Adventures of Robin Hood book that he gave Sean, and he tells Damien that he's 13 and doesn't know what he's talking about. Dick leaves thinking that whoever took Sean left the coordinates inside of the book, and the coordinates lead to Richard the Lionheart's grave over in France. As Dick lands on a building, Damien tells him, I'm coming with, and Dick tells him that he's not. I'm not dealing with another hissy fit, so Damien stops him, telling him, Our worlds have changed. Drake is gone, Duke is in the mansion, and I'm stationed in San Francisco with the Titans. However, the one thing that's the same is your attitude, and you're gonna get yourself killed to that help. Dick tells him, fine, but I have one question. Did you steal the old Batmobile? And Damien tells him, indeed I did. Now let's get going. However, back with the four robbers, the man from before wearing Dick's old costume kills the men, stating that this broken city needed Nightwing. And now a broken Nightwing needs Deathwing. Later, as the two of them reach Western France, they begin their investigation to find that the coordinates have brought them to the tomb of Richard I. He was a real-life king who often had roles in Robin Hood's storylines. The problem is, no one's there. Damien scans one of the tombs and he says that someone is inside. So Dick tries to push Damien away and Damien pushes back, telling him to wait! Based on the temperature variations, whoever is in that tomb has no face. Suddenly a voice shouts, they do have a face! It's the face of Dick Grayson! The face of Deathwing! The man wearing Dick's old costume jumps out of the tomb, grabbing Damien, stating that he knew that he would come. You would do what I would do, just not as well. Dick starts to fight against Deathwing, trying to free Damien, but Deathwing used Damien as a shield when Dick throws his punches. After cracking an elbow into Deathwing's face, Dick finally frees Damien and he tells him that he needs to get back. Deathwing pulls out his batons, but at the end of them are Blaze, and he runs through slashing at Dick's back. Damien tries to attack, but Deathwing knocks him away into the tomb that they just came out of. Dick gets back up, trying to get a hold of Damien, but Deathwing kicks him in the face, stabbing the Blaze from the batons into the tomb, breaking them off and nailing the lid shut. Dick charges into Deathwing's back asking, who are you? Who made you think that you were Nightwing and where's Sean? As Dick slams his batons into Deathwing's skull, Deathwing reaches back at Dick's face stating that Sean has nothing to do with this. She's just the last thing standing in my way of making Nightwing become Deathwing. Dick gets back up shouting, you're delusional, programmed. Tell me where Sean is and I can help. But as Dick charges back at Deathwing, Deathwing says, I can't tell you. I can only show you what's to come. He grazes Dick's forehead with a small dagger and suddenly Dick's eyes go wide. Dick begins to see him, but different versions of him, some good and some bad. He tries to speak asking where's Sean, but his words trail off. Deathwing raises the dagger, telling Dick to become the man that he's become. You're gonna have to suffer loss and fall farther than the ground, farther than hell. But before Deathwing can plunge the dagger down, a voice shouts no. Another person in an old Robin costume kicks Deathwing, telling him, not while Robin lives. Damien runs up shouting, that fool nailed the lid down, but he compromised the structural integrity, though the same could not be said about your forehead. Dick can hardly say anything in his current state of mind, and he asks, who are you? And Damien says, it's me, you fool. Where have you been? On the other side of the room, Deathwing picks himself up, telling the fake Robin, you're a mistake. Even he said so. You don't have his blood. The fake Robin pulls out the blade of batons, telling him, no, but I will. Damien starts shaking Dick, telling him to snap out of it. He's Damien, Robin to his Batman. We're the greatest team ever. Finding a new partner, considering having a child to replace me. I don't want to be alone. I need you. Dick slowly starts to come out of it asking, what happened? And Damien tells him, nothing, nothing happened. But this is insanity. The two see Deathwing ready to kill the fake Robin and they rush over knocking him out, freeing him. Dick reaches down to help the fake Robin up stating that there's no need to fight. And the fake Robin begins to remove the skin mask saying, of course not, we simply lose. As the mask comes off, the boy says that his name is Danish and his father was a truck driver. No, his name is Damien Wayne and his father is Batman. After looking at the fake Robin's face, 
Dick Du who made these Dala Otron copies of him and Damien. Sean was kidnapped by one of the sickest minds that him and Damien have ever encountered, Professor Pig. A short while later in another part of Paris, Professor Pig stands with Sean shouting to his Dalotrons, Soon, we will have a new addition to the gallery! One of the Dalotrons breaks their glasses, grabbing the sharp edges, and begins walking towards Sean, when suddenly there's a voice calling out to Pig. What do we do with little piggies, Nightwing? We make them squeal all the way home. Dick and Damien crash through one of the windows and they begin taking out the Dalotrons. But while the two of them handle the Dalotrons, Pigs turns back to Sean and begins to pull out a small blade, and he gets ready to thrust it down onto her. Dick calls out to her, but then a battering is thrown, cutting her ropes. Just as Pig swings, Sean steps out of the way and trips him. Dick tells Damien thanks, and Damien responds, telling him, It's only practical. I am the better shot. Meanwhile, outside, the fake Robin watches over Deathwing, and Deathwing asks, Is you enjoying the show down there, you little backstabber? The fake Robin asks, How did you? And Deathwing tells him, It's the acid and the Dalotron masks that Pig gave us. Tape really doesn't stand a chance. Just imagine what it's going to do to our real faces. The fake Robin then asks, Asks, so you know. Deathwing says, I know that you lived your life as Damian Wayne, the son of Batman. But before that, you were someone else. The fake Robin says, yeah, I was the son of a truck driver from Manchester. Whatever Pig did to us, it did not erase all of what I was. I remember going to school, playing football with my brother Tariq, and I remember my father. So what can you remember? Deathwing looks down telling him, I don't remember. All I remember is that I was a failure. Deathwing starts to hit the back of his head against the stone wall the fake Robin tells him that he has to fight for himself, fight to remember who he was. And after a few hits, Deathwing asks, Where am I? Why am I tied up? Tanish, please, help. Tanish then cuts the ropes, telling him, You're free now, free to remember who you were. And Deathwing tells him, Yes. I had a purpose, not to make Dick Grayson better, but to be better. And he starts to choke Dinesh. Back inside, Sean sprays Pig in the face with paint. He kicks him in the groin, finally putting an end to the fight. Dick shouts on the floor, are you all right? And Sean asks if that was the Robin that he's talking about because she thought that he would be taller. As the two hug, Damien turns back saying, blah. However, as she looks out, she sees Damien taking off and rushes out. Dick asks, where is he going? And Damien says, you just wanted your girl. Well, now you got her, so stay here. Once outside, Damien runs down the alleyway shouting, only I can steal the Batmobile! And then he feels a rock hit him in the back of the head. Deathwing calls down, telling him that it's a neat trick having it voice activated. Says I'm a dead match for Nightwing. Deathwing jumps down, but before Damien can attack, he sees Danish's bloody mask. Damien shouts, he was just a child! You're gonna pay for that with your life! But before Damien can even finish his sentence, there's a gunshot and Damien falls to the ground. A shadowy figure walks over telling them that there is only one path by which Richard Grayson will reach his true potential. Robin dies at dawn. A short while later, Dick and Sean head out to look for Damien, but that's when they see Danish's body in the trash pile. Dick turns and slams Pig into a wall asking, What's going on? Where's Robin? And Pig says that there's another patron. I was his physician made of pain. He is Dr. Simon Hurt. A few days later over in Egypt, Dick and Sean are on a guided tour. Dick says that he can't wait to see the sunrise over the ruins. And the guide laughs, telling him that they will see things that they will remember for the rest of their lives. Suddenly, thieves jump out of the sand and Dick starts to take the men out. One of the men pulls out a knife, but after still suffering an injury from fighting Pig, he trips and falls. Just as the man can strike down, Sean runs up and kicks him with a blast from her rocket shoes. The thief flies off and then the guide crawls away. But Dick grabs him, telling him, that was a pretty crappy tour. He goes on telling the guide, I'm a superhero and I would never threaten someone's life for information. She's the defacer though. She's a genuine supervillain. Sean holds the rocket over the man's face and asks, where can they find Dr. Hurt? After tying the rest of the men up, the two jump down a hidden shaft and Sean quotes the Robin Hood book, Hope be it ever so faint, bringeth a gleam into darkness. Dick asks, so you read it? And Sean tells him that she understands where he got his hokey goody goody world view. It told her a lot about how he looks up to old fashioned heroes and what they stand for. And he would make a good role model as well as a good father. Sean goes on saying that that's why she's here for him and Robin. She needs to know that she would stand up for something and it would be for good moments. As the two walk down into the temple, Dick says that she's always standing up, but then there's a sudden crash. One of the statues falls over where Sean was walking and Dick shouts, no, 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 no! Deathwing calls out that she only kept him from reaching his fully realized form. So that is why he had to drop a statue on her. 
Dick manages to kick Deathwing back, and as he does, he runs over to where the statue fell. Sean holds the statue from falling, holding out her legs, pushing it back with her rocket boots. Dick holds up the statue, and as he does, he can feel his ankle being crushed. After letting the statue down, Deathwing runs away, hacking at Dick, telling him, That's the difference between us! Nightwing has a weakness! Deathwing doesn't! Dick pulls out his knife that was used on him, and he charges at Deathwing, telling him, You're not a better version of me, you're just a failed me. The two crash into the stone pillar as the knife cuts into Deathwing's face, and then Deathwing drops to the ground, shouting, I'm sorry! Please don't hit me! Sean runs over to check on him and says that whatever the knife did to him back then, it's doing that to Deathwing right now. He's just another lost child. She then tells Dick to go ahead. She'll stay here with Deathwing. And Dick tells her that Deathwing can't be trusted. Sean looks back and says, Look at him. He's lost, alone, and scared. This is what I do. Dick decides that he's going to push on ahead, thinking about how Dr. Hurt is just trying to make him hate himself, experience an array of tragedies to see what he could have been. Dick then walks down the hallway where he finds more Dolotrons, all dressed as versions of him, pointing and telling him, Come see, come see. Dick steps into the altar room and shouts at Dr. Hurt, They got here before dawn. Dr. Hurt steps aside, showing Damien on the altar, holding up a bloody knife, telling him, Sadly, I tend to jump the gun when I'm excited. Dick shouts for Damien and he runs at him and as he does, Dick begins to fall through the ground and Dr. Hurt tells him to awaken, fall into a hell of hells, and if he's strong enough, crawl back to his body. As Dick starts to get lost in his own mind, Dr. Hurt says, You will live this tragedy over and over so that you can become a finely tempered weapon if you are to survive the dawn that is to come. Back outside, Deathwing begins to scream and Sean asks, What's wrong? Is there something that I can call you besides Deathwing? And Deathwing tells her that he doesn't remember much from before. But why is she here helping him? He attacked her and vandalized her paintings. Sean says that even if that is true, he's a victim like the Dolotrons. Deathwing goes on saying that there is one thing that he remembers. And before this, he was no one. He chose to do this. He jumps up grabbing the dagger, shouting that for the things that he did to Dinesh, he needs to die. Sean grabs him by the shoulder, telling him that she knows how he feels. She was hurt once too, but now she owns who she is and atones for it. He can do the same. Inside Dick's mind, Dick stands over a beaten pig, telling him, This will end my pain. But before he can strike down, a batarang is thrown from a helmet wearing Nightwing. Nightwing begins hitting Dick Grayson, telling him that he won't let him kill Pig. So Dick Grayson jumps on top of Nightwing, beating into his face, shouting, You can't be Nightwing! Playing hero means you lose everyone, including yourself! Now die! And as Dick looks down at the broken helmet, he sees Damien. He shouts back that it's just another trick, but before he can punch down, Damien grabs his hand. He asks if this is really what he wants to become, a pathetic mockery of what he once was. Damien starts to hit Dick, shouting, Guilt! Fear! Their anchor's dragging you down! And the more Dick tries to fight back, the more Damien beats down on him. As Dick sits broken, Damien tells him that he needs to remember what he first said when they met. Remember! And Dick says, You're right. I've been hurt. I've lost the people that I've loved. But that's not what makes a Robin. Dick cracks Dr. Hurt in the face, yelling, I will never let myself be defined by tragedy. And Sean's voice calls out to Dick. But when he turns back, Sean says that Robin, he's still alive. Dick runs over to the altar, yelling for Damien to wake up. Damien looks over and he struggles as he tells Dick, You're an idiot. I was simply in a deep trance repairing the damage. Sean says, but he stabbed you, like in death parts. And Damien begins to get up, telling him, it's only a flesh wound. All I did was simply contract my muscles to move my liver out of the way. And Dick shouts, you could do that? Dr. Hurt then starts to pull a gun, telling them, no! Robin will be no use in the days to come. He's too stubborn and proud of his father. Then a voice tells him that that reminds him of a kid that he met named Dinesh. Deathwing appears out of nowhere, punching Dr. Hurt, and Hurt spins back, hitting him with the pistol, shouting that he is nothing more than a pathetic creature, nothing more than a dry run. Deathwing pulls out the dagger from before, stating that he thought that he could fix a broken Nightwing, but being Nightwing fixed a broken him. Deathwing thrusts the dagger into Hurt, and Hurt shouts that he won't be back alone. He will drag him down as well. He pulls out his own knife, and he stabs it into Deathwing's chest. Before the others can help, the temple begins to shake and crumble, and the three of them, Sean, Dick Grace, and Damian Wayne all escape outside. Seconds after they escape, everyone watches the underground temple collapse on itself, and Sean asks, where did Dr. Hurt and Deathwing go? A few days later, in Bloodhaven, Sean tells Dick that the pregnancy test came back negative. But for now, she will still need a little space alone. And as the night sets, Dick and Damian look out onto the city, and Damian says that he's going to be coming back soon. His father confiscated the Batmobile. Damian goes on, telling him, I was wrong, and yes, I'm admitting that I made a mistake by coming here as I did. Perhaps I was just looking for an excuse to 
And Dick smiles, telling him, Aw, you just missed me. And Damien tells him, If you tell anyone that, I will bring a thousand hells upon you, Dick Grayson. Dick laughs. <laughs> Fine, I'll tell you a secret too. Back when Bruce returned, there was a moment when I thought that maybe it would have been better to keep you as my partner. But I was too young then. I was too afraid that I would be bad at being a dad. But now, before he can finish, the radios go off that there's a break-in at the bank, and Dick asks if he's up for a little action before he goes. Damien tells him, Indeed, pity these miscreants. The heir to the mantle of the Batman and the original Robin are here for them. Over on the streets of Bloodhaven Boardwalk, though, Roland Desmond takes his time walking to work, enjoying the bright lights of the town. As he walks up to Marcus Casino, he sees a homeless woman picking through the trash, and he asks if she's found anything good. She tells him that something big must be coming. Lots of jitters and nervous stomachs. Nobody finished their fancy club sandwiches. As she starts to eat, a tourist walks by bumping into Roland, and continues walking like nothing happened. Roland stares at the woman, his veins about to burst, and after squirting a drop into his mouth, his body turns back to normal. He starts to take out his wallet and gives the hopeless woman some money, telling her that she used to always chase his underage self out of clubs, but she always looked the other way when he was lightening some customers' pockets. A short while later, Roland walks around the casino to find a rather lucky man winning all of his hands at blackjack. Roland tells the man that he must be from out of town, and the man says, yeah, Toronto, but how did you know? And Roland leans in, stating that he grew up here, so he's got a certain kind of kinship with anyone from here, and he doesn't like him much at all. The man tells him, yeah, whatever, but then he loses a hand. Roland flips open his jacket, and he tells the receiver, come and get him, and then suddenly the man is dragged off by the staff members. Moments later, the two men throw the man into a room and Roland tells him that he could tell that he had been counting cards. Nothing distracts a man like a little unprovoked aggression, huh? As Roland takes another puff from his cigarette, the two bouncers call it, attention, he comes. He wears socks of the red panda skin. His cufflinks are made of the finest Argello horn. He is Tiger Shark. As the doors open, Tiger Shark walks in. The men says that he is the majority owner of the Marcus Casino, and he would like to invite the two of them to a special viewing of his aquarium. Meanwhile, at Sean Sung's apartment, Dick comes in through the window asking, so, <laughs> what's with all the romance? She tells him that she was going to surprise him, but she fell kind of asleep, you know? Just wanted to give him some good luck for tomorrow's interview. As Sean helps Dick with his shirt, Dick says, actually, the second hand is still getting high-tech weapons into Bloodhaven. I need to find out who that is. She takes off his mask, stating, you can be Nightwing anywhere. How about you be Dick Grayson for once? Dick thinks back to when Barbara told him that he went through hell to get his identity back. Why not focus on being Dick Grayson? And he tells her that he's going to go to the interview, though he's a little rusty. She can help him with his interpersonal skills, can't she? Back with Roland, he looks at Tiger Shark's giant tank, and he says that he's got some nice things in there. Seconds later, the man cheating from before is thrown into the tank. Hank, and Tiger Shark says that he's got something big coming up. The biggest thing this second-rate town's ever seen. He then grabs Roland by the shoulders and tells him, I've been watching you. Walking the floor is beneath you. You're a predator. A hunter. One who has evolved perfectly for your environment. A group of sharks then swim up to the man and they begin to eat him, turning him into chum. The tiger shark goes on stating, I would like to offer you to search Bloodhaven and find Nightwing and bring me back his skin. Later that night, Dick begins to head out on patrol when someone calls out to him from the rooftops. He turns and Blockbuster appears, punching him down. Dick quickly recovers after hitting them, and then as he begins to fight Blockbuster, Blockbuster continues to counter his hits and then headbutts him into a wall. Dick's body smacks into it and Blockbuster takes out a small squirter and he sprays Raise a drop into his mouth, stating, I'm not here to kill you. Before Dick can ask who, Roland reverts back to normal and he tells him, My name is Roland Desmond. Mark was my brother. I'd like to offer you a job. Long ago, back in Dick's Robin days, Mark Desmond was the original blockbuster. He was a chemist and a smart one of that until he made a concoction that increased his strength. The smarts left him and he became very aggressive and easy to manipulate, especially from his own brother. However, there was a point when Roland had betrayed his brother and he was taken in. Afterwards, Roland came back stricken with guilt and he wanted to do something good. So he picked up where his brother left off with a concoction. As Roland finishes his story, he reaches down to Dick telling him, So, are you going to take my hand or make me look like a putz? Dick, of course, takes his hand and he asks, how are you able to control the blockbuster transformation? And Roland says, before Mark got hauled off, he developed a new version of the muscle juice. Let you keep your brains, which is nice, because you're going to need it if you want to take down this tiger shark guy. Dick questions him and Roland says, yeah, he's a smuggler straight out of Gotham, specialized in rare animal products. And now he's using my casino to launder money from sales of illegal high-tech weapons from the second hand. The more Roland talks, the angrier.
angrier he gets, reverting back to Blockbuster. And after another drop, he reverts back, stating, that's why I need you. I'm losing control. Roland then hands over a piece of paper, stating that these are the names of the Harbor Police under their payroll. With his prior history, no one's going to believe him. Dick Grayson takes the paper and he says, you're right. Why should I trust you? And Roland goes on telling him how some of the shark's gear is spilling into the streets of the poorest neighborhoods. His city is getting used and people are dying, and this is just the beginning. Over the radio, Dick listens into the police report of violence at the mall, and he tells Roland that he's got to get going. As Dick swings by, Roland yells, It's happening, isn't it? It's up to us! We're the only ones who can stop this! Over at the mall, the two men begin running, and one asks, Where did they get that thing? And the other man says that some guy told him it fell off the back of a truck. He thought it was one of those love dolls. An android jumps down before the men, holding out her arm, charging the blaster in her palm. And the second man shouts, Come on! Switch to love mode! Switch to love mode! As the android fires, Dick swings in, grabbing him, and he tells him, Run! Don't ever buy strange robots again! Dick jumps back up, fighting the android, but her advanced processor allows her to dodge all of his attacks, easily knocking him to the ground. He looks up, stating, Maybe I need to spruce up the resume a bit. And then he notices the forklift. He jumps on it and drives the forklift into the android, skewering her in to the warehouse wall. A voice then asks, what the hell are you looking at? And Detective Elise runs out of her police car with her gun drawn. Dick tells her that that is an algorithm model war droid. Serious military hardware. Like this is being brought into Bloodhaven and a source says that some of the cops are helping with that. She takes the paper from him because they'll read the names of the supposedly dirty cops. And Dick asks her if any of these people could in fact be dirty. She thinks on it and says, let's see. That's none of your damn business. She heads to her car and Dick shouts, come on, you owe me from the James Nice case. And Elise snaps back and I'm telling him, what? You think we're equals or something? You come to my town, do my job for free, get in my way, and you face no consequences? I don't owe you anything. So get out of here before people start to see us together. The next morning, while Sean is at work, she finishes up a call regarding most of her money for the community center being taken away. And the voice tells her that it must be nice to come back, right? Sean gets up hugging Dick and asks, so is she dating a sexy longshoreman yet? And Dick tells her, actually, he didn't get to the interview. She yells at him, telling him he had one measly job interview. And Dick says, why are you so focused that I need something to keep me here? As Sean walks off, she says that things have changed. Ever since they got back from Egypt and them finding out that she wasn't pregnant, she thought that he was disappointed, but it seems like he was relieved. Dick gets up telling her that one of the things that made him fall in love with her is that he could be honest. And another is that she knows exactly who she is, who she was. But he can see that that anger inside of her still defines her. The pregnancy made him realize that he wouldn't want his child growing up driven by tragedy or anger. And while he would teach them not to do that, he fears that she would have the opposite effect. Dick hugs Sean and he tells her, he just doesn't want to lie. They can work this out, but he has to go. It's important. He leaves and Sean's phone rings and the operator asks if she would like to accept a call from the black mate prison inmate, Beatrice Butler. She wipes a tear from her eye. She says yes. And as the call connects, she says, hey, pigeon. Back with Dick, he follows the lead on the dirty cops back to the pickup site along the coast. But before he has a chance to do anything, Skyhook swoops in, grabbing him, throwing him into the broken ship. He lands and then the lights come on and he's surrounded by villains. Roland then calls out to everyone who is interested in purchasing weapons from Tiger Shark. They can rid themselves of the superhero problem. In front of them, a superhero sample to test their weapons on. Roland leans out and he tells Dick, hey, thanks for taking that job for me. A few moments later, over in the other parts of town, Giz works away with his latest weapons when his phone begins to ring. He picks it up stating, hey, Nightwing, yeah, I'm staying away from the computer like you told me a hundred times. Dick says, good, but that's not why I'm calling. Would you happen to have the blue Prints for a Sea Phoenix 3000 luxury submarine, not for any particular reason. Tiger Shard shouts at the villains, You let him escape! But I will give one of you free weapons if you can bring me his masked head. While many of the villains are now chasing Dick, Giz calls back, Giz the Blue Cheese. And Dick says, Call me Nightwing. I already have a code name. Giz tells him, Right! Well, I got your blueprints. Here's the escape capsule on deck three. So Dick charges through the underground men, Shrado and his boss, China White, Snake Pit, until he finally gets ahead to find Clock King in the middle of stealing things. Clock King shouts, wait, I must have it. And Dick tackles him to the ground just as the arrows are shot into the room. As Clock King gets back up and runs, Shadow appears pulling out more of the arrows. And Dick jumps on her and headbutts her. Still a bit dazed from the hit, Dick doesn't have a chance to fight back as Magog picks him up and throws him across the room. He gets back up, but Magog then punches him back down into the skeletal display. He continues to attack and Dick blocks the hit and then he grabs one of the bones with his feet and he sticks it right into Magog's eye. Magog's energy begins to lose control and he shoots Dick into the wall and out into another room. Kid Amazing and then steps up, and just before he can attack, he's blasted away into another room. Dick gets up huffing while holding Magog's staff, and then he 
promptly passes out. After a few moments, he manages to pick himself back up and walk towards the escape pods when another voice tells him, nice work. Rather than opening the hatch, Roland punches right through it and Dick sighs, fine, let's do this. Roland laughs, telling him, no, no, you misunderstand. The thing is, you've already lost the war and like any good war, it's going to end in a bomb. Roland pulls off a plate revealing a bomb and it's already counting down. Roland then pulls out the solution to change him back and he says, I'm going to defuse it. And Dick asks, why are you doing this? Dick gets back to work on the bomb and Roland steps into one of the capsules telling him, what I said about this place being used was true. However, then some guy shows up acting like he loves this place, like he grew up in it. The only one who could save the city is going to be Roland Desmond. Giz radios back asking if everything is okay and if Nightwing is alright, and as Dick is watching the countdown happen, he tells Giz to tell Sean that he, Cthum, and before Dick could finish, the submarine explodes! However, what Giz didn't see or hear was that three seconds before the explosion, Dick had spotted Clock King wearing the same suit the Time Bomb was wearing. He grabs him, telling him, make room, and as the bomb goes off, Clock King, of course, froze it. Once the explosion stopped, Dick says that they have to go rescue everyone, and of course, Clock King tells him, no, no, son. The vest only has a limited charge, and if we exceed it, it will drain us, which is why Tiger Shark wouldn't touch it. What happened to Time Bomb when we removed the vest is that he lost molecular cohesion and he crumbled to dust. He had to be vacuumed up. But while Clock King is looking away, Dick pats him on the shoulder, telling him that no one dies on his watch. Clock King looks at his watch and he sighs, and he takes off his glasses, stating, these are antique frames passed down from my grandfather. Dick punches into him, and when he wakes up, Clock King finds himself, along with all the other villains, safely floating out to sea. Tiger Shark shouts that they need to get back onto his ship, and seconds later, that explodes! Meanwhile, Dick opens his eyes up to see Sean next to him, and he begins telling her that he's sorry about how he treated her, and, but she stops him, telling him to just kiss her. And then he opens his eyes and sees Elise. He quickly pulls away, and Elise tells him that he could be a little happier to see her. She did just drag his ass out of the bay. And he asks, what about the vest? She points back, stating that that sparking burned up thing over there. Next time, wear floaties. Dick gets back up and he looks out at the ocean, asking what happened to all of the people in the super criminals. And she tells him that the ones without a wanted poster are on their way back home. The rest are on the run. If she hadn't rescued him, maybe she would have gotten a few of them captured. She lights up her cigar and says, part of this is her fault. He asked her for some info and instead of looking into it, she just got all kinds of pissed. But that's what he needed, right? Dick tells her he couldn't trust his source, but he can trust that she hates him. And then Dick realizes that means that Tiger Shark is still out there. So he runs to the jet ski shouting that she owes him for almost getting him killed. She yells back, how? She saved his life. She can still taste his damn lips. And back at the Marcus Casino, Tiger Shark storms into his back offices and inside, Roland says nothing distracts a man like a little unprovoked aggression. And now he would like the casino and him out of town. Tiger Shark scoffs, hitting a switch, telling him that he is right where he wants him. The second hand wanted to give him a little token of their appreciation, but he was never all into that exotic alien weapon crap. Just then two literal Tiger Tiger sharks claw their way out of the underground hatch and they begin eating at the guards! Roland looks back telling him, yeah, I grew up in the streets of Bloodhaven. Ain't many environments tougher than that. Roland transforms and he begins to beat up the tiger sharks and after bashing one into the ground, he takes the second one, ripping open his jaw. Tiger shark begins to run for the door and then a headless tiger shark is thrown into his path. Roland walks up to tiger shark telling him, that's one thing. If you wanted to win, you're gonna have to get your own skin into the game. Later, Dick pulls up to the docks and he runs into the casino shouting for Roland. From behind the bar, Roland tells him, night work back here. Come and sit and enjoy the drinks in the house from the big winner. Dick takes takes a seat and Roland makes the cocktail and he says after all of that, the second hand will want to be a bit more conservative on who they make their sales with and aim for a higher caliber of customer. They're going to need someone who's a smart controlled businessman who knows the city like a native. Someone who can remind their clients that they need the latest technology to protect them from the Bloodhaven boogeyman known as Nightwing. So cheers to that and if you would see yourself out, there's a lot of transitional paperwork left by the previous owner. Dick tells Roland, wait, there's something he should know. He's going to beat him because he knows him. Roland asks, how's that? And as Dick goes on, he tells him, you may have convinced yourself that you care about this city, that you're the hero that it needs. But the truth is, it was never about guilt. You didn't come back here because of what happened to your brother. You took the serum because you were alone and scared, and to prove that you weren't weaker than your little brother. Roland spins back, bashing the bar top, and Dick smiles, and Roland tells him, get out of my sight! Meanwhile, back at Giz's place, Mouse asks, so, you're not a stripper. And Gig says that this is even sexier! He's been helping Nightwing with tech support, and also looking into some interesting stuff with the second hand. Mouse tells him to be careful, and Giz says, don't worry, to catch this ghost in the machine, we're gonna need to be a ghost. But what Giz doesn't see is that there is someone watching him, and over at Sean's apartment, Dick arrives and he hugs her, telling her, 
that he just needs to, but she stops telling him that she's sorry. She asked him to give her some assurance that he would in fact keep his feet on the ground, that he would be the thing that she always loved, him. But he wouldn't give her that, and instead he got scared of what could happen. He asked her to change, and she isn't running from who she was, not even for him. Dick shouts that he knows that what he said was messed up, but they can fix this, and Sean yells back, no, there isn't anything to fix. Stop trying to swing in and save this. It's over between us. There's nothing left to save. As Dick leaves, Sean shuts the curtains and sits on her bed, and Beatrice walks in stating that she always thought that her paintings were an extension of who she was. It's time for her to paint again, for both of them to fly. Some time passes and Dick did end up getting a job at the Marcus Casino as a dealer. As Roland walks by, he tells Dick, you're good at your job. I've got my eye on you, kid. But during that, at Mouse and Giz's apartment, Mouse walks in shouting for Giz to help bring in this stuff. She then sees Goob run up to her with his bloody paws. She runs to Giz's room to find Giz bloody laying at his computer and the weapon that he was working on stating, access denied. As the moon rises over Bloodhaven, one can see all of the inner workings of the city. You can see the families gathering on the patios for the night of eating, the black market dealings going on in the alleyways, and the dancing in port parks. All of these things can keep a person busy, but tonight, Dick has to remain focused on the bigger issue. As a Cobra agent shouts chaos for Kali Yuga, he is punched in the face and Dick begins to take out the rest of the Cobra lance heads. The question is why a cult dedicated to washing away the world in a wave of discord would rob a fundraising ball for a Bloodhaven politician? The correct answer is, they wouldn't. That's when the reasoning behind it begins to sink in. Someone else is behind this. Dick feared this day for months after he learned that he got out of prison. Raptor. The individual who said that Batman was doing it wrong and had trained Dick Grayson wrong. The individual who claimed to be better than Batman. Raptor once helped Nightwing bring down the Parliament of Owls. He was his partner and even a mentor. But when he tried to kill Bruce for taking Dick Grayson away from the circle and putting him into a life of privilege, he turned into one of the most dangerous enemies that Nightwing has ever faced. As Raptor swipes at the politician, Dick dies in taking the hit to push the politician out of the way. Raptor stands back up stating that he was waiting to see if he changed. Thought maybe giving him a little more time to follow his lead. But here he is, saving another trust fund baby power fiend in a designer suit. Raptor turns firing a hook from his gauntlet into a waitress on the second floor, pulling it back, causing her to fall off. Dick runs in to catch the woman, just as Raptor expected. However, as Dick turns back, Raptor is gone. Later that night, Dick and Elena kiss under the moonlight, and they stop with her stating that she can tell that he's not all here. Dick says that he's sorry. He covered 20 blocks, and Raptor just disappeared. He's definitely up to something. And Elena tells him, more thievery, she suspects. But he's not anything special, just another gangster. Go out and stop him. That way you can come back to Gotham. Dick looks down, stating that she knows how he feels about that. And Helena says, yeah, yeah, this Bloodhaven needs Nightwing thing. But she puts herself fully into everything that she does, whether it's being a spy, a superhero, or his lover. Down on the street, Detective Elise shouts, Hey, tights, you think I'm going to be digging in the tracks to find you? You're nuts. Helena then gets up and tells Dick that she will not be second to anyone or anything. Dick jumps down and tells Elise thanks for meeting him, but she says don't get used to it. After her two men got busted for helping out Tiger Shark, internal affairs started cracking down on her whole department. Assisting a vigilante is just the kind of thing that they're looking for. That and after their little kiss when she pulled him out of the bay, it messed with her head and marriage. She turns to leave and says that she knows he's a little warm for her form, but the less that she sees of his cute bod, the better. So for now, he's on his own. So without having any ears around the town through the police, Dick turns to the only other people that he can trust, the runoffs. As he jumps down in front of the community center where Sean holds her meetings, he finds everyone standing outside. Stallion tells him that the ex-supervillains of Gotham club meeting has been canceled. It might be a permanent thing, so why doesn't he just skedaddle? Dick says, please, I'm sorry how things have gotten. I wish that I didn't have to do this, but I need some eyes on the street and could have used your help. Stallion pushes her way up, yelling, If you don't remember, our friend Giz got killed helping you. And Dick tells him, Giz went out on his own, and I have to live with that, but... Stallion pulls back, punching into the ground, telling Dick, I said skedaddle! We quit being villains because it ruined our lives. So then we tried to be heroes, and we lose our lives. So best get on with it. Dick gets up, dusts himself off, and says he's right. He needs them to leave, run off to somewhere else. As Dick leaves, he begins to head towards the place that he wished he didn't have to go. Because this person can help. He makes his way into the casino and he fights his way through the guards and just as the last one falls, Roland Desmond steps out. Dick tells him that he needs his connections and his knowledge. If he helps him find and stop a man called Raptor, Dick Grayson will leave Bloodhaven forever. 
The next day, Roland gets ready to speak in front of a group of local officials at Bloodhaven about how he wants to help change their city for the better. And just as he's about to take the stage, Raptor appears, slamming his face into the mirror, stating that he's going to show everyone how fake he really is. Roland shouts, Raptor? And Raptor throws him through the glass, stating, it looks like Nightwing's been telling his tales again. That's just something Nightwing would do. Use any method, even crawling to an underworld boss like Blockbuster just for help. Raptor then attaches a wire around Roland's neck and he begins to fire it over a statue before the officials. Raptor heads to the podium and shouts, You've all been conned by this man! He would want you to think that he's a self-made man pulling himself up by his own bootstraps. The line pulls back, lifting Roland into the air, and Raptor goes on telling him, I'm gonna show you that this man is just like everyone else trying to get ahead. What if I could show you the beast deep down inside? Just then, Roland begins to let Blockbuster out, and he charges at Raptor, and as Raptor dodges the attack, he hits Roland with a mist, stunning him, stating, That's it. Show everyone what it really means to be the king of Bloodhaven. Roland shouts out in pain, but as his eyesight comes back, he sees Raptor is already gone. Roland then says, I just just wanted to talk to the kids, so they have something to aim for. Meanwhile, over at Blue Blood Labs and Chemical Transport, scientists work with the local fishers at extracting horseshoe crab blood and making vaccines. But just then, Avery's voice calls out that she can't believe she's saying this, but they don't want their money. They just want the blue stuff. One of the fishers yells, Like hell! I got up at the butt crack at dawn to pick up these critters. You can go get your own. Avery points her gun at the fisher, asking, How about a mix of a little purple into that stuff then? And another voice asks, How about nah? And Dick throws a baton, knocking the gun out of her hand. As Helena gets ready to fire her crossbow, Dick says, Do I really have to say it? And Helena tells him, No. She knows that he prefers her Bloodhaven scum served up alive, so she can't kill them. It's all they ever talk about when they're engaged in other business. Dick grabs two of the horseshoe crabs and cracks them between one of the whale ender's men and then puts them back, stating, Thanks, fellas. Behind some barrels, Avery slams a syringe into one of the barrels, stating that if the enders want to keep being players in Bloodhaven, they're going to have to level up. Dick calls out to Avery to just come out, and she tells him no, and her voice begins to change. She lunges out after sticking herself with a syringe, and as she jumps, she misses and falls flat on the floor. Dick looks over at the other men with Avery, asking, You too? And he puts his hands up, telling him, Oh, hell no. A short while later, Roland gets a call from Dick stating that his tip was right, but it wasn't Raptor. Laying out subtle clues really isn't his thing. Roland tells him no, it's not. He was here and he forced my hand in front of the children. They saw a blockbuster. What the hell did you bring into this city? But before Dick could answer, Helena says Roland Desmond. How disgusting. Dick turns back stating, wait, you've been listening to my conversation? And Helena tells him, of course she was. Dick sighs stating, after all of this, you still don't trust me. And Helena tells him no. She doesn't. That would be stupid. Unlike him, she learned to never trust anyone other than God. Dick tells her, look, I don't trust Desmond. I'm just using my resources since we both share a common interest in helping Bloodhaven. Helena grabs Dick and smiles, telling him, you poor sweet boy, and then knees him in the stomach, telling him, this is for having me take on the Whale Enders gang on a mobster tip. She then punches him to the ground, and Dick gets up asking, what was the second one for? She tells him that he allowed her to open herself up and feel comfortable. He left her vulnerable, letting her trust him. That was a lesson that he taught her. Never let your guard down. Later that night, Dick gets ready for his shift at the casino, trying to figure out what he should be doing next. He listens in on Roland's conversation with one of his men as they offer to take out those kids who saw him. Roland tells him that he better not lay a hair on them. Do whatever it takes, put them through college, whatever they need. Dick then takes out the earpiece, thinking, at least he was right that Blockbuster does have some moral code. But then a man clears his throat and Dick says that he's sorry. And the man tells him, no problem, here's 10 grand. Raptor pulls his glasses down and tells Dick, go ahead and deal me in. Raptor then says, you know, I was gonna teach you what you'd forgotten and bring you back to the world you've been taken from, but you abandoned me too. You broke my bones just like the floor broke my mother's. Now here we are. You could try and stop me here. Leap over the table, snap me into pieces, but then Roland would see your hand and know that you're secretly Nightwing. A waitress jumps up from the table, offering a Raptor a drink, and he laughs, telling her, ha no thanks, the hard stuff makes me crazy. Dick flips his cards and says, congratulations, sir, you win that round. Meanwhile, over at the home of Beatrice Butler, otherwise known as the Pigeon, she runs off to begin her own investigation. Sean finds one of Raptor's masks lying around and says that Pigeon tested her to see if she would join their fight. So whatever Pigeon is up to, she's in this. But this isn't their fight. They can all get out now. Goober the Squirrel jumps off of Mouse's shoulder and onto the laptop, starting to type. As information about Nightwing appears on the screen, Mouse says that when Nightwing asked for the runoff's help, Giz jumped at the chance. He saved lives and didn't die a villain. Everyone gathers around and each one says, for Giz. Back at the casino, Raptor points out into the crowd telling Dick, look what you traded in for. 
You traded Bruce Wayne for Bloodhaven, a city of the guilty. Once again, you bet against your own people, your own history, your own mother. Dick begins shuffling up a new deck and he says, My mother came to you when she needed help. Helped steal treatment for leprosy. She was an angel to you, so you promised to protect her. Even after she started to go by the name Mary and built a life with my father. You continued to do so from the shadows because you were a wanted man. But you followed her and traveled the world only a few steps behind. Ever since we first fought, I've been trying to piece together my childhood to remember you. Interviewing people from back then, and here's the theory that I came up with. That night, before the Flying Graces went on stage, you sat back watching the performers get ready. You had already given up being Mr. Numb by then, and you always felt a pang of envy because you weren't joining them on the stage. But then... You saw something strange, a new guy arguing with the ringmaster. Something was off. However, that's also when the crowd started to come in, and that's when you saw Bruce Wayne. As the night went on, you would watch from underneath the bleachers to make sure that Mary's performance went as planned, except you got distracted. In front of you was Bruce Wayne. It was Mary's birthday, and you figured why not get her something nice, something nicer than my father would have gotten her. But then, that's when the dry thud could be heard, followed by the screams. Everyone lost a piece of themselves that night, but you, you weren't the guardian anymore. You were just another petty thief, Raptor. So a new brand was built, took pieces of half a dozen superhero costumes, all to convince yourself that you weren't a bad guy. And that's when you built a metal glove and named it after the Romani wizard, Sukala, chained to a rock to prevent himself from destroying the world. You blamed Bruce Wayne, the rich, even me. Anything to avoid blaming yourself. And as Dick flips his cards, he says, dealer wins. Raptor sits in silence for a moment, but his look of sadness fades and he begins to laugh. He smacks the chips off the table, yelling, Nice detective work! Better than Batman, but it doesn't change a thing. Just then, some of the people begin to scream in pain as their muscles start to grow. Raptor then whispers that he gave the people what they needed to cure what ails them. Now, they can be themselves, Dick Grayson. Over at the Whale's End neighborhood, Thrill pulls up with Mouse as Sean touches down, stating that he remembers this place. His parents used to bring him here. And as the three walk in, Sean says that it was closed when the factories left the neighborhood. The Whale Enders gang has been squatting here for years, but what they came for is the lab. Mouse looks around, stating that this place is like new. Before Gracie came to Bloodhaven, she was a biochemist at the Gotham Aquarium. A voice then says, yeah, it was messing around a place like this that turned her into Orca. Gracie gets up from leaning on a wall, stating that Whale's Enders are done. They tried to replicate her experiment, and right now she's not in the mood for a house call. So get out. Sean chases after her, yelling, wait. Bloodhaven is under attack, and we just learned the people are being turned into monsters. You were one of us once. Gracie turns back, yelling, stop. This isn't a runoff's meeting. She's got nothing to share with them. Sean shouts to the group that she said herself that she would follow anyone who would accept her. So when the whale enders came to ask her to make the chemical that changed her, she didn't. Because if she did, then they wouldn't need a bodyguard with the strength of a killer whale. They wouldn't need her. Mouse holds up Pigeon's laptop, stating that Raptor and Pigeon want to tear Bloodhaven into the ground. They're going to use their own citizens to do it. She can read the code, but not the formulas. They need her. They need Gracie Ballin. They need Orca. Back in the casino, Stalin and Grimm arrive to see Raptor making his escape with Pigeon. But inside, everyone is turning into blockbuster monsters, forcing Dick to suit up as Nightwing. While the chaos breaks out on the floor, one of the dealers begins to pick up the chips to cash in. But just before she can get the last chip, Dick runs through, grabbing her just as the table is thrown at her. The dealer stops Dick, shouting, Hey! Those are mine! Back off! But as she goes on yelling, her tone changes, and she begins to grow in size. But before she could fully transform, Roland charges through punching her, saving Dick Grayson. Dick tells him, Wait! You could hurt her! And Roland says, No, I'm not. She's an employee and a friend. But you, you're just a tourist. Roland spins back around, grabbing Dick, shouting, you were awful quick to get here, Nightwing. We made a deal to stop Raptor. Have you been spying on me? Dick asks him, What has he done? Look around. We gotta get all of the non-drinkers to safety. Everyone else has been turned into monsters because of contaminated cocktails. And as Roland lets go, Dick says, Where the hell did Raptor get some blockbuster serum anyway? And Roland says, Alright, alright. Without weapons from the second hand, we were at a disadvantage. With all of the other bosses starting to look towards Bloodhaven, I had a couple of scientists take a sample of my blood so that they could make the serum available for mass production. We took out the parts that let them keep their smarts so that they could just focus on the parts that gave you power and rage. It's only going to be sold to the bosses who needed it so that we could level the playing field a little and then sell them the antidote for a higher price. But before I could get out the shipments, that thieving stalker took them. The two continue to fight the blockbuster horde and Dick then asks, what about the antidote? And Roland tells him Raptor burned it. 
The psycho is all on me. It makes this situation just as much on you. Just then, one of Roland's employees calls to him, stating that they have a problem. Some of the roided freaks are getting out into the streets. And just as they do, Stallion and Grimm show up, knocking them out. And he says, actually, there's been an update. A gorilla and a cowboy are fighting off the critters. As Dick follows Roland to the elevators, he says that they need to get outside and help those two. And Roland tells him, first, we have to get to the 17th floor and initiate a full bomb scare lockdown so that no more of these things get out. You go help with the ex-villains. You can trust me, just like you trusted me with the whole tiger shark thing. The elevator door opens up, and Dick says that Grimm and Stallion can hold their own for now. As the two get in, Roland begins to take his antidote, and Dick realizes. He can't be blockbuster for extended periods. It hurts. And that's when a twisted voice says, So thirsty, dry and caged. Roland then tells him, I'm pretty sure we met before. Remember tiger shark? Just then, the top of the elevator is ripped off by a giant tiger shark who says, I drink all the tasty blood. Over on the nearby building, Pigeon begins bringing up the last of the crates, stating that it's almost time. His beautiful masterpiece will come to fruition, and anyone who tries to stop them in this failed city will either be broken or dead. Raptor then grits his teeth, stating that he couldn't do it. When it came time, he couldn't kill Nightwing. I had him. I showed him how he'd lost the long game, how he'd learned so damn little, but his eyes, he's got his mother's eyes. Pigeon then tells him that when he found her rotting at a prison and wrote her about her work, it wasn't just a mutual condemnation of a sick world that drew her to him. They had a shared pain. Defacer took her heart and future just as Nightwing took his. They will end Nightwing together. Back in the elevator, Tiger Shark makes his way in and Dick then asks, I thought Tiger Shark had skipped town. And Roland asks, did you really think that I would let this crazy freak walk free? Tiger Shark punches into the side of the elevator, causing the lines holding it to snap. The elevator begins to fall as Dick jumps out, catching himself while catching Roland. And Roland tells him, look, just so you know, this changes nothing. We have a deal. While Tiger Shark begins to climb up the shaft, Dick begins to swing back and forth, allowing him to throw Roland up to the open elevator door. Roland then heads down the hall, calling out to the security guard on shift. And when he finds him, he sees his throat has already been slit. Back with Dick, he tries to maneuver around to avoid Tiger Shark. But as Dick kicks off, Tiger Shark bites right into his leg. Using Tiger Shark as a platform, Dick kicks off of him and up into the opening. Dick then shouts to Roland to hit the switch, and as Roland hovers his finger over the button, he begins to pull back. Tiger Shark lunges up, but at the last second, the door slams shut. Dick then rolls back, stating that he thought that he didn't want to talk to him, and Roland then asks, did you get hit in the head too hard or something? And Dick tells him, be quiet, I'm on the phone. On the other line, Sean says that she tends to get over bad breakups when things get a little crazy. And if their enemies can get it together, to face her a Nightwing, better do it as well. Pigeon is working with Raptor. Mouse was able to get into Pigeon's computer and they found out that the casino is just a distraction. They're going to poison the entire city. They have canisters planted all over, hidden in plain sight. And Roland then asks, what is it? And Dick tells him that they're sending a final message on night wings. As the two look out, they see a swarm of birds flying their way, all with small canisters with a blockbuster serum around their neck. Back outside, Stallion holds down a mutated man and asks, so what are we doing here? And Sean flies down telling him that she needs him to prime them up so that she can carry the antidote without any issues. As the paint cans on her legs light up, Sean starts to weave throughout the crowds, tagging everyone that she can. And then there's a rumble on the ground. Suddenly, Tiger Shark breaks out shouting, Filled out a hole! Now I make holes in you! Sean sighs and then pulls out a syringe loaded with the antidote. And up on the roof of the casino, Raptor begins to think back to a time when he was spending time with Dick's mother, Mary. As he does, Pigeon asks if he's thinking about her again. And Raptor tries to explain, but Pigeon says that she did all of this for him, for us. So why can't I be the one that you're thinking about? However, before she can finish, she's hit in the back of the head and Roland says that all of these damn birds on his roof, shoot! Dick then runs past shouting to Raptor as he punches into him. Raptor spits out a tooth stating, I always let you live out of respect for your mother to teach you, but now I have nothing left to offer. He swipes slashing at Dick's chest and the two go back and forth, punching and tearing into each other. As Dick takes a kick at him, Raptor grabs him by the face and spins him around. With one quick jab, Raptor lays into Dick's back and over with Roland, he picks Pigeon up and throws her into the ground, stating that he can do this all day. Pigeon then says that he likes being the strong man, huh? And she sprays the blockbuster serum in his face. She gets back up telling him that since he's already got the serum in him, this should go extremely painful. She was the avatar of the Ishtar, the goddess of sacrifice. Cities are monuments. They must fall! And just then, Sean yells, hey! Monuments don't like you much either! And slams a stab Statue strapped to the spray can down on top of her. Raptor sees Pigeon gets crushed and headbutts Dick off of him to go get to her. Sean hurries over to Dick and as she checks on him, her phone begins to ring. She grabs it stating, give me some good news. And after a few seconds, she begins to yell, hell yeah! She turns back to Dick telling him that they did it. The runoffs came together and saved the people in the casino and they came together to help Nightwing. 
Dick struggles and says, Raptor, he still has the trigger. And that's when Raptor smacks Sean out of the way, telling him, yes, I do. Dick jumps up screaming at Raptor, punching into him, shouting, you could have been a good man. You could have been the man that she thought you could have been. And suddenly there's another scream as Roland charges through, breaking the two apart. Roland falls to the ground, stating that he needs to get it under control. And Raptor laughs, telling him, with all that muscle, you still missed. Except Raptor's nose begins to bleed and his visor cracks as he falls to the ground. He gets back up, telling Dick that he finally did it. He knows that they made a deal, but he's got a new idea. They can rule this city together. He can be the brother that he never had. Roland extends his arm and Dick shakes it and then sticks him with one of Sean's antidotes. Dick tells him that that's the antidote to the Blockbuster Serum. Roland falls to the ground shouting, you played me and cheated. And Dick says, yeah, I guess I did learn a thing from Raptor. While Sean starts tying Roland up, Dick checks on Raptor while he lays mangled on the ground. Raptor says, you know what really gets me? It's not just that I wasn't there for Mary, it's that I was never there for you, always in the shadows, one foot behind. You never knew who I was because I never let you. My real name is Richard. Raptor passes on and Sean hugs Dick from behind and Dick says that he missed her so much. She tells him that she loves him too, too much. Nightwing can call in to face her anytime, but Dick can never call on Sean. Lights begin to shine down from the police headquarters and before Dick knows it, Sean is already gone. A few weeks later, Dick gets ready to go out of patrol when he stops by the pier to see Elise. She hands him a cup of coffee stating that one of his old buddies just kidnapped a couple of radio pundits and threatened to show how the left and the right are just reflections of. Dick takes a sip of his coffee stating, Mr. Nice. Elise lights her cigarette up, stating that it looks like he picked up some new toys along the way. She would go with him, but he knows how her hubby gets. But, uh, think he can call in some help? And there you have it, concluding with issue 34. Now, the Nightwing book took a different direction at the end of this, and I wasn't really a huge fan of it. This writer left the book, and so at 35 until about 50, there was a different writer, and he started to gain a little bit of traction on his storyline, and I was kind of enjoying it. But then, over in the Batman book, they decided that Nightwing had to get shot in the head, and he then became Rick Grayson for issues 50 till about 85. At 85, they decided to revert Nightwing back to being Dick Grayson and Nightwing, and that's when Tom Taylor took over and we're getting the storyline that I am covering right now, known as Into the Light. So I know we're kind of missing a huge chunk of Nightwing's history, but if you're a fan of Nightwing, I think we're all choosing to pretty much ignore the Rick Grayson arc and just move on from Raptor to the arc that came directly afterwards until the new arc that we're currently dealing with at the moment, Into the Light. But let me know what you think about that down below. It's actually kind of shocking that the Rick Grayson storyline lasted for that long, because that means that it went for like two to three years, and I was kind of shocked when I realized that it went from issues 50 to 85. That is a lot of comic books for them to just be like, it's kind of Nightwing. Anyway, I'm Benny, this is the Comic Story Channel, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time right here.